live from MC Germantown, it's MC Baseball on MC TV with the MC Raptors hosting the Mustangs from Stevenson University. Hi everybody, I'm Michael Brown and it is so great to be back here on MC TV, to be out here at Germantown and a special treat to get to call some baseball with my good friend Joe Thompson. Oh Michael, it's really great to be out here with you on Windy Hill and as Hall of Famer Ernie Banks used to say, it's a beautiful day for a ball game. Let's play two. Let's play two indeed. We've got a double header for you today on MCTV. So make sure you stick around for the second game. It starts about 20 minutes after the first game. And Michael, don't forget, this is the last home game of the season for the Raptors. And you know what that means? Sophomore day. We're gonna honor eight outstanding Raptor student athletes today. So it is indeed sophomore day. A little bit later in the broadcast, we'll be showing you some highlights from the pregame ceremony where they honor those Raptor sophomores. So stick around, a lot of baseball on tap today. We'll be right back with the first pitch after this. Hi, I'm Tim Kirkjian with ESPN, and you're watching Raptor Baseball on MC TV. And here we are. We're all set for the first pitch of the ball game. Leading off for Stevenson, number five, Russo. And on the mound. On the mound for the Raptors, we have number 17, Christian Hobson. And Hobson is a Fastball, curveball pitcher, but the way they like to work him is kind of backwards. Instead of leading with the fastball and coming with the curve to change it up, he starts curves and then uh, tries to sneak fastballs by people. And uh, let's see if we can set the Raptor lineup here after this next pitch. And that evens the count at one. Okay. At, uh, at first base, we have uh, Cam Goodling. At uh, second base, well, we'll pick that up. One ball, one strike, and there's a line drive single to center field. So Russo gets things going right away for Stevenson. And that brings up the second. This uh, is a shortstop, Jake Baptiste. Yeah, number 47, Baptiste. That's a good piece of hitting by Russo right there. He, there's a slider to the low outside part of the plate and he was able to reach out and tag it to the center field. Second base for the Raptor is number 20, Raptors number 24, Daniel Fernandez. Third baseman is number five, Maverick Durant. Shortstop is Number 11, Aiden Williams. Uh, left fielder is number 22, Cameron Day. Center fielder, number 23, Kevin Noss. And the right fielder is number 15, Jonathan McMath. Behind the plate for the Raptors is number 13, Luis Gonzalez. And again, Hobson on the mound. Ooh. I think that one, that was really close. Like that uh, little curveball got away from Hobson right there. Somehow Baptiste was able to duck under it. Hobson is a freshman. Keeping an eye on Russo over there. He's got a couple stolen bases on the season. And outside, two balls and a strike now to Baptiste. The 
the uh, umpire is saying he's hearing some kind of uh, audio feedback. I don't think it's from our No, I believe that's from the PA. It's somewhere else. I believe that's from the PA. Strike on the corner. Baptiste thought he had a walk. Yeah. That, that one was definitely right on the black. You know, it's a good pitch by Hobson to, to you know, work it. Work outside like that. Pick off the Tim. Okay, Hobson doesn't have the fastest fastball of all time, so he uses that to try to sneak one pass when you're looking for the curveball. Fouls it off. Russo is running with the pitch. Stevenson tried to be aggressive right there with the hit and run. Ball got fouled off. We'll see what happens in this one. Opson is uh, out of St. Vincent Pilate High School. It's a good program over there. So full count. Top half of the first inning. Game one of a doubleheader, and he loses him. You got two on and nobody out. And that brings up uh, number 23, Trent Smoot. He's today's catcher for uh, Stevenson, and he gets. Uh, I, I thought it I hit it. No, I thought so too, but it, they didn't call it a hit by pitch. It is, however, a wild pitch, and that moves the runners up. So the Raptors in trouble in the early going here, and here comes Dan Rasher to try and settle Hobson that, down. That looked like it did hit him in the hand, or maybe hit the barrel of the bat. I'm not sure which, I, but the umpire didn't call either of those. No. It looked like it ricocheted off of something. It sure did. Maybe it was the catcher's mitt. Yeah, it might have been the catcher's mitt. Yeah. I mean, it was so far inside that the catcher had to jump up real quick. Uh, yeah, from our perspective, we could not really see because we were blocked by both the umpire and the catcher. Yeah, and Luis Rodriguez is uh, he's pretty good behind the plate there, but you know, when the ball's that far inside, it's it's tough. It's really tough to uh, get to that pitch. Yeah, and uh, Hobson is a little bit out of sorts. He started off pretty strong, but uh, now that there's runners on base, he's Getting a little bit wild. I hope he, that with that visit, that he can calm himself down and uh, find his rhythm. Uh, that's the whole idea there. Dan Rasher, the head coach of Raptors, uh, trying to settle him down. That's high. So it's quickly 2-0. Two, oh. two runners on. Nobody out. Top half of the first inning. Michael Brown alongside Joe Thompson on Windy Hill in Germantown. But this is about as calm as it gets out here, Joe. Exactly. You know, if you look, you look at the uh, the flag out in center field, or center right field near the scoreboard, and it's barely moving out there. It's extremely unusual for this hill up here. <laughs> it really is. It can be calm anywhere else, but it's going to be windy here almost all the time. Going outside. Three balls, one strike. It seems to be that Hobson's trying to work the outside corner on all the right-hand pitchers here. That's going to be a strike on the inside. Yes, and, and that's a good bit of pitching. Like you throw outside, throw outside, come inside with a fastball, making guess a little bit. Needs a strikeout here. Ground ball through the hole into left field. That brings home Russo. They're going to go station to station with that. Hold the runner at third. So a single and an RBI for Smoot. And again, another looks like a curveball here, breaking ball. He's able to stay down on it and drive it through the hole between short and, and third base. Get a nice RBI right there. 
And that brings up uh, Jake Kunkel, number 24, first baseman for Stevenson. Lefty, big guy. First and third, nobody out, one run in, top half of the first inning. MC Raptors against Stevenson University. Trying to hold that runner. No, he'd love to uh, move into scoring position. Yeah, that's for sure. With the cleanup hitter up. Yeah, watch, watch that runner on third, though. Exactly. He swung through that one. A nice high fastball right there. I, I would guess that Kunkel was thinking that the, uh, the curveball would come, but he was able to sneak a fastball by him. Those high ones are tough to lay off of. Way outside. That curveball did not do what he wanted. Yeah, uh, Hobson's strongest pitch is curveball. Like, he doesn't have command of it yet. Hopefully he'll be able to get it under control to be able to throw strikes. There's the ground ball to short, and he bobbles it, and they don't get anybody as another run scores. Yeah, that was a Taylor B ground ball right there. Should have should have been a double play. They would have given up the run anyway. Yeah, that uh, the, br the breaking ball stays down. Kunkel, I mean, it was right. It was hit right to uh, Aiden Williams, but I guess he he was trying to transfer it before he actually got it and uh, ended up booting the ball. That brings up uh, Caracato. Kevin Caracato, number 11. Caracato, you better watch out for him. He's got some pop. He's got four home runs on the season. He's the left fielder today. Oh, they hit the pickoff play, hit the runner. And they're sending. And here he comes. Ball got away and into the sent, left field, into the right field. They sent Smoot all the way around from second on the. Uh, Wild throw to first. And uh, Hope Kunkel's all right. I think the ball might have hit him in the head on that pickoff throw. Now that makes it three to nothing. And Kunkel moves up to second on the air. Nice fastball by Hobson there. MC definitely needed those uh, those two outs in that double play. Could minimize the damage, but you see what happens if you uh, make that type of mistake. It come just back, uh, come back to bite you. Yeah. Caracato now. He's behind in the count. Uh, that's over his head. Yeah. That curveball is just not breaking the way no. that he wants it to today. No, not so far. Yeah, maybe maybe he was, uh, he's so used to the wind up here, he's thinking the wind's <laughs> going to push it a little bit more than it, than it usually does. And there's oh. another wild pitch. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd call that one a pass ball. I, I, th I think uh, Rodriguez should have caught that one. Regardless, mm -hmm. that moves uh, Kunkel up to third. There are still nobody out. Yes, and the Raptors desperately need one right now. The runner on third, no outs. The heart of the lineup up. Any way they can get one, they need one. And there they get one on a strikeout. All right. That's a good battle by Christian Hobson. Like he, ju he just rears back and throws his best fastball right there. Absolutely his best fastball of the day. Uh, that brings up Ryan Lassiter. Second baseman. Kunkel still on third. One out. And he fouls it off. It's a cue shot off to the end of the bat. Another lefty here, Lassiter. Just 
just a little bit outside. So Hobson's making an adjustment here. Like his curveball's not working yet, so he's going more fastball than usual. Swung right through that one, another strikeout. So Hobson. It's very, very <laughs> smart pitching. I mean, his, his main pitch isn't working. He's not working. It's not working. So what he's doing is like, okay, I'm just going to go with the heat and uh, hope it works. Yeah, you guys try to hit it. That brings up uh, Cooper Sancombe. Hobson's finally getting back in the groove. Like he's using the fastball now. Like he wanted to use the, uh, like I said, pitch backwards. Right. Lead with the curveball, but the curveball wasn't working. He's going, you know, mostly fastballs now, and he's getting some outs. And uh, very resourceful. Sancombe is the center fielder for uh, Stevenson. Sancombe's been 333 on the season. Ooh, he hit him. Uh, I think, again, that was another attempt at a curveball that he just doesn't have command of right now. No. Whether it's the ball or what, but he didn't have a, he didn't have a good feel. And that brings up uh, number 25, Jake Gitterman. He's the DH uh, today for uh, Stevenson. out of Williamstown, Massachusetts. Again, it, it, Hobson's been able to get two outs with the fastball. He's hoping to, minimi hoping to minimize the damage here. That was a good fastball right there. It's slightly high and outside, but you know he's been able to battle back from a, a hard start to the game. Let's see if he can get this third out. Get them out of the inning. Oh, he grooved that one. Strike one. One and one. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if Gitterman's going to get a better pitch than that. No, that was uh, that was a sweetheart. I'm, I'm guessing Gitterman had the take sign. Uh, that's in the dirt. There's the throw to second. Not in time. Cutler stays at uh, at third base. So it's a low and inside pitch, which is a hard one for a catcher to uh, corral. And Rodriguez did a good job of catching it and getting a good throw down there. There's a line drive base hit into left center field. One run scores. Here comes another one. And Gitterman with a, two, a, a single and two RBIs. Gitterman may not have gotten a good, as good of a pitch, but stayed down on an outside pitch, drove it the opposite way, scores two runs really easily. So that brings up number 14, Joe Apuzo. He's the right fielder today for Stevenson. So Stevenson has put up five runs here in the first inning. This is obviously not the start that Dan Rescher and the Raptors wanted. Now the air is really hurt. Two big errors in the inning. Uh, that was a good that was a good slider trying to get him to chase off the uh, corner of the plate. One ball, one strike, two outs. That's on the corner for a strike. Exactly. So he, he throws he throws the slider just off the plate and comes back with a fastball right on the corner of the plate. Guessing slider here. Oh, yeah, yep. way outside. Way That's outside. a wild pitch. That's definitely a wild pitch. Again, still doesn't have control of the breaking ball. And that moves Gitterman up to second base. It's interesting because of the injuries on the uh, on the Raptors pitching staff. They've got Hobson pitching today. He, he's also a catcher for the team. Yeah, so they're, they're he's, he's not a full-time pitcher. 
The Raptors uh, have had to dig deep in the pitching department. They're top uh, four, and here's another strikeout to end the inning. So, rough first, uh, top half of the first there for the uh, for the Raptors. They uh, trail five, nothing. But they'll be coming up, and let's see if they can uh, cut into that lead, Joe. Yeah, that was a nice off-speed pitch. He's been throwing so many fastballs, so throwing so many fastballs. So the Mustangs are gearing up for that fastball, and he throws a little off-speed pitch. Look, look like a little changeup right there, and uh, Puzo was way out in front of it for the strikeout. So, so uh, Hobson has been. Again, battling that, that, that off-speed pitch, the breaking ball, he hasn't really had it. So he goes more fastball, more fastball, more fastball. He's able to get out of the inning with three Ks. You know, the, the five runs given up, the, you know, the errors, that doesn't help, obviously, if they can clean that up. And Hobson's able to, like, calm himself down and get, get that breaking ball working, then, you know, they, they may be able to get back in this game. Well, that's the, uh, that's the goal. And... Uh it's a rough start. It's a rough start. So the Raptors will be coming up. Leading off will be uh, number 11, Aiden Williams. And Aiden Williams is a consummate leadoff guy. He's a, a high average, speedy guy. Gets on base. He, he walks. Uh, he, five times more than he strikes out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he's got uh, plate, plate discipline. Um, and when he gets on base, like, he he, uh, he can motor around there. He's got a bunch of steals. Yeah, he's got seven steals on the season. And he leads the team in batting average with a 404 batting average. So he's definitely a threat at the top of the, the, top of the uh, order here. He's also their top... Uh, on base percentage guy with 504, which is very impressive. Exactly, if you can get on base half the times, you're doing something right. You're doing a good job. All right, let's. On, uh, on, on the mound is Kyle Pellegrino. And he's a sophomore and a lefty. Let's see if we can uh, set the, uh, the defense for you here real quick. Uh, at first base, we got Jake Kunkel. At um, second base, Ryan Lassiter. Shortstop is Jake Baptiste. Uh, third baseman is Alex Russo. Center field, Cooper Sancombe. Left fielder, Kevin Cariaco. Uh, right fielder is Joe Apuzo. And behind the plate is Trent Smoot. And uh, as you said, on the hill is Pellegrino. And Pellegrino's coming in throwing heat. Nothing but strike so far. There's a ground ball up the middle. And nice play by the second baseman, but he didn't have a chance. No, Aiden Williams is way too fast for a ball hit that deep in the, uh, in the hole at second base to catch him at first base and so now the Raptors have their their speediest base runner their their base stealer on to start the inning yeah that'll put some pressure on the uh, on Smoot the catcher and that brings up uh, Kevin Noss number 23 the center fielder Noss is out of Miami, Florida. Miami Killian Senior High School. Raptors have a handful of Florida kids on their team this year. Yeah, the uh, the uh, recruiting has been able to be expanded. They recently become a scholarship school, a Division II scholarship school. So they're, they're able to expand the universe of where they can derive their student efforts. That is very true because traditionally this has been, the Raptors have been pretty much a, a Montgomery County uh, based team. Yeah, they, they dip into Howard County, Northern Virginia. A little bit. Prince George's County a yeah. little bit. 
but mostly Montgomery County. But now yeah. that they're you know they're able to expand, it's Florida kids. And Smoot tried to throw it, or fake to throw. I, I I really think he was doing, and he lost the ball. But Williams decided to hold. Yeah, because of the the. Uh, the fake throw. He was headed back to first base when uh, Trent lost the ball. Just a little I know you're there, so I'm going to throw it over to first throw there. Not a very serious attempt. Trying to keep him honest. He's gone. There he goes. And he's uh, got second. Well, that was a uh, walk anyway. Walk anyway. A lot of energy expended to uh, get to second base, but I like the aggression that the uh, Raptors are showing. If it hadn't been ball four, he probably would have gotten that base easily anyway. And that brings up number 13, the catcher Luis Rodriguez. Big Luis, leading the team in lots of categories, home runs and RBI, second in walks. He's got three, 300, 301 batting average as well. So he's going to be a tough out. Yeah. yeah. He's got the team lead in RBIs. And he's right up there in home runs. A good chance for him to, like, eat into that lead. They need that. Hit right here would be, there's a ground ball, hard ground ball to second. They go to second for one, back to first, double play. Get the double play, and that's the double play that the Raptors needed last in the, in the uh, top half of the inning that they weren't able to pull off. And that brings up number 15, Jonathan McNab, uh, McMath. He's in right field today. Great turn by the middle of the infield and a nice scoop. First place, Kunkel. McMath is second on the team in homers with four. Nice little breaking ball right there. Let Pellegrino start him off with. McMath, another Florida product. Takes a strike. Ball, one strike, two outs, nobody in, in the bottom half of the first for the Raptors. And two straight fastballs. That they just want McMath is just watch and go by. Like, I mean, get good pitches. You gotta, you gotta give a good hack at it. Ooh, that got him. Boy, we heard that one. Yeah, hit him right on the wrist. Luckily, at an angle where it didn't, uh, Hit him flush. Well, that gla kind of glazed off his forearm. And that brings up uh, big number 33, Cam Goodling. First baseman. Goodling's hitting 337 on the season, 18 RBI. He's a freshman. And he's out of uh, Pennsylvania, New Cumberland, right across the line, I believe. Cedar Cliff High School. So the Raptors with runners on the corners, two outs, bottom of the first. Cam Goodling at the plate. Williams on third, McMath on first. The Raptors are trying to be kind of patient right here, make Pellegrino work a little bit, make him throw some pitches. In the count again. Goodling goes for something out of the zone and missed it. Oh, that was a good, good breaking ball. Had good movement downward. Yeah, it, he, looked, it looked like it was going to be a low fastball. And then at the last second, dipped down. It's good pitch. Yeah, it dove. Runner going, and that's strike three. So, after one complete inning. The Raptors threaten, but don't score, and they trail 5 nothing. 
heading into the top of the second inning. And uh, Joe? Yeah, again, good pitching right there. There's just a good mix of, of uh, fastball, breaking ball. Uh, Pellegrino was, was able to pull off right there. But like I said before, the difference right now in the game is that the Raptors weren't able to pull off that double play, that Taylor made double play right at the shortstop. And Stevenson was able to do it and minimize the damage. Yeah, exactly. That really is the tail of the first inning. Uh, Stevenson was able to turn two. The Raptors weren't. And, of course, the Raptors also had the uh, the throwing error. Yes. And, uh, you know, speaking with uh, MC manager Dan Rasher before the game, he was saying that's kind of how their season has been going, that they're really close. They normally play really good defense, but it's just a player to a game that gets away from them that leads to those one-run one run losses, the, those close games that they could have gotten out of, the, out of the game or out of the inning or out of the game, but one thing goes wrong and then it just like snowballs. And if they can like just, uh, they're, they're hoping to be able to clean some of that up as the season progresses, just so that, you know, moving into next year, they have some momentum going forward. They've lost four games on the last play of the game. Not the last inning, the last play. And that's demoralizing. That's, that's demoralizing. Tough. That is hard to deal with. All right, we are back at the top of the order. Russo, he bunts it back to Hobson. Easy out. Uh, so easy bunt attempt right there. Russo thought they, they would catch the defense lifting, but he bunted it right to Hobson. And that brings right. up, uh, take a look at that. Yeah, it, it, it was a bunt that went straight to the pitcher. If he had gone one side or the other, it probably would have been a base hit. All right, that brings up Baptiste. He walked and scored in the first inning. Jake Baptiste, a freshman, playing shortstop today. That little curveball right there at Hobson it was was better than probably anyone he he'd thrown thus far in the game. Maybe he's getting a little bit more of that control. Well, obviously that would be a huge uh, lift for him, as he he had no command of it in the first. Baptiste is a New York kid. A lot of New Yorkers on this uh, Stevenson team. Yeah, a lot of folks from uh, up in New York travel down 95, get to Baltimore County. I guess the weather's better. I don't know. He's from North Babylon. Um, I have. I really don't know where that is. You might. You're a bit of a, nor a New New York person. Uh, spent some time in New York, but I don't know that one. As the boop hit to right field. Baptiste is able to muscle one out off his fist over the first baseman. Yep, a little Texas leaguer falls in for a base hit into right. They got a guy on first now with uh, one out. That brings up Smoot. He had a single, knocked in a run, and scored in the first inning. A breaking ball that just barely got over the first baseman's head there. Trent Smoot is from Eldersburg, Maryland. Hobson comes back with the fastball again. And that's his, that's his pitch that's been working for him this game. Definitely looks sharper this inning. It helps get that first out right, at, right off the bat, too. It does, yes. First pitch, one out. And a timeout. That's rough for a pitcher right there. I, I would have uh, preferred that he'd go ahead and throw the pitch right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. You, you can you almost can, you can ruin your you can you can ruin your shoulder. Yeah, st stopping a pitch in mid. There's a, that's going to be a tough play to third. Throw to first. In. Um, no, nope, nope. couldn't handle it. No, nope. throw. 
Thought he had dug it out there no, for a second. Throws in the dirt, bounced off his, off his glove. Durant with the play. Let's take a look at it. Good charge. Good charge and set his feet, but then threw it right into the ground. And I think it hit the edge of the edge of the, the grass, the lip of the grass. A and tough bounce, play. Bounced right right up into the chest. So he'll get an error there, but yep. uh, that, that was a tough one. Yeah, I, I think. I think with the you know he. He tried to rush it because it's a fast runner, but he could have made that play. He had some time. So now you got runners on first and third with one out here in the top of the second. And that brings up Kunkel. He got on by an error in the first inning and scored. First baseman for Stevenson. We'll see if they try a little street steal or a hit and run here. He's from Lewisbury, Pennsylvania. Ooh, pretty good move there by Hobson. Yeah, close play right there. And I think uh, Smoot's uh, asking if that was a balk. There's a high fly out to right field. Runner is tagging. He gathers it in. Here comes the runner. He'll score standing. So a sack fly for Kunkel. And they're able to keep. And a run scored for Baptiste. They I'm sorry, Smoot. They were able to keep. So I think Baptiste scored. I think they were able to keep Smoot at first in the sack. All right, that brings up um, Caracaco, Caracato. He struck out his first time up. It looks like Hobson's like has settled down quite a bit. Uh, he, he's finding his strike zone a lot more than he was at the first inning. Yeah, he he definitely has better command of the strike zone. Throw to first, not close. Caracata is another uh, New Yorker. The New Yorker. Farmingdale. There goes the runner. They got him in a rundown, and he's out. So the, the Raptors handle that one to perfection. And they limit the damage to just one run. And we'll take a quick break. The Raptors trailing 6 nothing going into the bottom of the second. The parallels are really eerie. Emmett Till and Trayvon Martin both not killed by police, but by people who might as well have been police. In both cases also found innocent in a very unjust and unfair court of law. And welcome back to the Germantown campus of Montgomery College. There's a nice panoramic view of the campus uh, with the the famous globe, which is actually not part of the college, no, but, but to the right, uh, to the left rather, is the brand new science center. Yeah, the the bioscience center, which is uh, a a big, it's a big deal for Montgomery College. You know, in the I two seventy biotech corridor, to, that the college has a facility for training. Uh, students to be able to work in that sector of our economy. You know, it's kind of the crown jewel of Montgomery College's Germantown campus. And, uh, you know, uh, the proof's in the pudding. They have tons of grads from, uh, from that program have gone into uh, 
professional uh, careers. Yeah, and the thing is that there is <laughs> such a demand, obviously with the pandemic, there's been such a demand for people in biosciences that, that this, as a training ground, has been vital to so many of the different companies that are in the uh, that biotech corridor and, and the 270 corridor to provide them with people to do the testing, to, to you know work in the labs that Montgomery College was able to train and send out into the uh, you know into the market. Now. Looks like there's a pitching change for Stevenson. Dylan Brid is on the mound now. Well, we kind of halfway expected that because uh, this is a JV team, and uh, and they're you know it's a mix of well they're all on the same roster, so. Uh, you know their their varsity and their JV roster are all one and the same. So you you could have you could have varsity you know kids that normally play varsity playing in this game because they're rehabbing or they need work or they haven't thrown in a while they need at bats whatever. Nicholas Marley's at at the plate for the Raptors now. Good patience there by Marley. Good looking pitch. Yeah, bridge through there. A lo little low, though. Three balls, one strike. And he walks him. So Marley walks to lead off the inning, and that brings up uh, number 22, Cameron Day. The fastball that floated high right there. Day is the left fielder for the Raptors. And he's a, he's a freshman out of, um, I'm sorry, a sophomore out of Clear Spring High School in Hagerstown. 260 average on the season. Raptors with a runner on. They're trailing 6 nothing. top of the second. They're looking to manufact manufacture something here at the bottom of the order right now. That's high. Ch chances of uh, a big home run are pretty slim. So they're going to have to like move station to station until they get the uh, heart of the order back up. Fouls that off, out onto uh, Observation Drive. And a hard ground ball into right field for a base hit. So Day with a single to right. That brings up uh, number one, Maverick Durant. I got to say, this is my favorite name on the Raptors. Uh, it's, a, it's a good name. It's that's a daggone good name. You think he's related to Kevin? I wonder. Or two. or were his parents Maverick fans? Yes. Those of us old enough, of which I am one, to remember that show from, uh, I believe it was the seventies. Maverick or. Top Gun or right Dallas Mavericks who knows regardless it's a great name he's out of Damascus High School James Garner right and he's in third yes James, James Garner. Garner absolutely I'm older I'm older than I look 
He was a card shark. Hey, that one came right back at us. I think he's trying to tell us to stop talking old people's talk. <laughs> the thing about that show is he wore a suit all the time and never got dirty. High and tight. So the Raptors was something going here. Yeah, as I was saying, like they're small balling it right now. Two balls, two strikes, two on, nobody out. There's a foul ball out of play. Back over the uh, netting. Durant did a good job right there. It's a, a good tight fastball. He's able to get the batted head around just enough to follow it off to stay alive. Wait, that bat. Yeah. He definitely wasted a good pitch there by Brid. Another foul ball. Another good pitch. Good breaking ball, trying to catch the corner. Able to foul it off and, and hope that he gets a pitch that he can drive more easily. He's working it. Another ground foul. Another good looking pitch. That's right. He's, he's, uh, he's a good he, at bat he, here. He, he's, uh, he's playing the Bee Gees. He's staying alive. <laughs> that, that is another old person reference. <laughs> I have a feeling more people know that one than Maverick. Oh, swung right through a high fastball. Yeah, that one was right in his eyes and looked like a big meatball, but those high fastballs, those are really high. They, really, they, really hard to catch up to. Boy, that's for sure. They're so they, tempting. They look so good, but can't get that bat up there fast enough. And that brings up number 24, Daniel Fernandez, the second baseman. He's second on the team in uh, batting average. And right up there in uh, RBIs. He's a good guy to have up right now. So a productive guy hitting number nine in the order for the Raptors. Also has a very Good on base percentage. Yeah, 410 on base, 347 at the at the plate. There's a throw down to second base. Not in time. Runners on first and second, one out. This one heck of a throw by Trent Smooth right there though. Yeah, that was heck of right, a throw. right on the bag. But uh, Marley was able to get back. Williams on deck for the Raptors. Britt's been able to uh, battle back from the 0 2 count. Or 2 0 count. He's got, uh, he's got some steam. That's full count now. See, One down. See if he tries to gas a fastball by him, or tries to tries to uh, catch him looking on a breaking ball. And he lost him. He went breaking ball, and it wasn't even close. So that loads him up now for Aiden Williams. We got the top of the lineup back up. Williams, second on the team in batting average at 392. If they, can, if they can avoid the double play right here, then they'll be in good shape. Good, great opportunity here for the Raptors to uh, get back in this one. Bottom of the second, just one out. Sacks full of Raptors. High and tight. Yeah, that, was, that was a breaking ball that didn't break much at all. So Williams ahead in the count. High and outside. High fastballs. And nowhere to put him. Brid asked for a new ball. It's like, and I didn't like that other one. Comes a visit to the mound by Stevenson. And just like Rasher did in the first inning, like Stevenson coach is just trying to like, hey, look, dude, 
Calm down. We got a six remember, run remember, lead. Yeah, you know, throw, throw some strikes here. Use your fielders. That's what they're there for. That's why they have gloves. You don't have to do it all yourself. Exactly. And trust your stuff. I think he maybe is like pressing right now. Just like trust your stuff. Great look at the uh, the field there. Wonderful to be back in the booth here for MCTV. And as you can see, the production is first class all the way. Hi. So even after the mound visit, he's still 3-0. and oh. not, not throwing strikes. There's a strike. Yeah, Williams was taking all the way on that one. He Absolutely. Had to make him prove that he can throw one. Absolutely. After losing Fernandez and falling behind 3-0. There's another strike. Don't know why he didn't. I don't don't know why he didn't pull the string on that one. That was that was a pretty good pitch right there. There we go, and he lost him. That's a base on balls and an RBI. Marley comes around to score. So the Raptors get on the board. And that brings up Nas. He walked his first time up. And he takes a strike. So base is still loaded. Just one out. Raptors with one run in in the inning. And again, still a great opportunity right here at the top of the order up. Ooh, swung through that oh, one. That's a great change up right there. He was looking fastball all the way. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was an excellent pitch. So he's quickly ahead 0-2. That's in the dirt. Here comes the runner, and Day scores standing up. How do you score that one, Joe? Uh, that would be a wild pitch. That's what I thought. He's trying to th trying to throw a low and outside breaking ball. It started started low and broke even lower into the dirt. Now the Ra Raptors with runners on second and third. First base open now. Still just one out in the inning. 6-2. High and wow. Nowhere close to the strike zone. 2-2. Two -two. So after jumping ahead 0-2, it's now 2-2. Two -two. Raptors with two in, two on. Brid looks a little rattled right now. Fouled off. Noss has a great opportunity right here to get, get a couple RBI. There's a flat ball to center field. It's over his head, off the base of the wall. One run is in. Oh, they held up Williams. Wow. I, I would have thought with his speed they would have sent him, but they held him up. They're playing it safe. But a great piece of hitting right there. Dead center field off the top of the wall right here. Take a look at it. Breaking ball that he's stayed back on. The only reason that didn't go over the over the fence was that it wasn't a fastball. If it was a fastball, that would have yeah. been gone. <laughs> but he had to he had to wait, shift his weight a little bit. Stayed back on it enough though that he's able to get a really good swing on it and hit it off the top of the wall back there in center field. So Durant score. I'm sorry, uh, Fernandez scores. And that brings up Rodriguez. Uh, he hit into a double play his first time up. So you got Williams on third and Noss uh, on second. And he fouls that right back to us. Yeah. I would have caught it in my teeth, but there's this uh, fence between me and the field. <laughs> I've seen you do that. That was before all the dental work. And there's a pitch outside. Yeah, but just like that, Michael, just a little small ball at the bottom of the lineup and then a big hit by the heart of the lineup, Raptors are back in it. 
Six three. They're having some good at bats this inning. I guess they should be grateful to Stevenson for uh, pulling Pellegrino out. <laughs> Another breaking ball that didn't break. And there is action uh, down in the Stevenson bullpen. They got two guys up. High and outside. Three and two now. Still just one out. Runners on second and third. Popped it up, and it's out of, Just play. out of play. There's not there's not a lot of foul ground, uh, particularly on the third base side. No, not at all. But uh, that was a high inside fastball that R Rodriguez probably should have left off of. But again, that high pitch, like it's right in your eye line, looks so good, but you can't get your bat around so easily on it. Particularly when you know he he's, this kid throws pretty hard, and he called him out on strikes. Rodriguez really thought that was a, uh, a ball. He was on his way to first. Yeah, and uh, it was almost a strike him out, throw him out. His uh, trend behind is. the plate. Yeah, I guess uh, that might have been a little bit low, but you know the run fire thought it was good. But that throw down to third base nearly caught Williams napping over there. That bring that's two outs now. And that brings up uh, McMath. He was hit by a pitch his first time up. Again, great opportunity to drive in a couple more runs. Balance the score. Oh, wow. Strike. Boy, that was, uh, that was a low one. That one's in the dirt. Still two on. Base hit here should score two. And Trent Smoot did a great job blocking that ball. He got his body in front of it. Saved a run. Saved a run. And there's a pop up to deep center field. He's over. He dropped it. And that'll score two runs. And that is an error on the center fielder. I'm not sure. We got to look at that replay. That might have hit off the top of the wall just as he, as he, because he was tentative going for it. I don't know if it hit off his glove or the wall. Let's take a look at it. It's going to be tough to tell. Big drive off the fastball. Nope. nope. You're right. It's off the off his glove. He, off his glove. It's, t it's a tough play, but a play that could have been made. It hit his glove. But he's also fighting the sun right there. Yeah, he is. Not an easy play. Not an easy play. So two runners score. McMath coasts into second, and that brings up Goodling. So now the Raptors have put up five here in the second inning, and it's a 6-5 ball game. And there's a base hit into left field. Here comes McMath. He runs well. Here comes the throw. He is out. That was a great throw by the left fielder. Wow. Fantastic throw. Excellent Caricato throw. Caricato yeah. just hosed him. I mean, yeah. perfect throw. Yeah. Good piece of hitting. Again, breaking ball. But Caricato came up firing. And it and really wasn't that not, close. No. As long as he didn't drop the ball, it was a definite out. So, you know, uh, as we mentioned in the pregame before the game today, it's uh, it's sophomore day here on the uh, Germantown campus because it's the last home game of the regular season. So uh, the Raptors graduating sophomores were honored uh, before the game. And uh, here's here's a look at uh, at some of that ceremony. And it's just a wonderful thing to do for a group of young men who have given so much of themselves, of their bodies, uh, to this Raptor program, but also just being a great representative of what Montgomery College is, both in, in their hard play, uh, but also the, in their sportsmanship and their scholarship. 
uh, you know, when they were making the announcements of these sophomores, they were giving out their GPAs, and there was a lot of three points out there, and that just shows like the quality of what these young men, you know, who these young men are, that they, you know, are also really good students to go along with their athleticism. And I think it's really nice they give them beautifully uh, these beautiful action shots that are framed, um, photographed by uh, by Michael Simone, and it's a it's a great keepsake, um, well deserved for these young guys. So back to the action, and here's Caracato. As so often happens in baseball, the guy that makes the uh, the excellent defensive play leads off the next half inning. We'll see whether or not Hobson can keep him from uh, keeping that keeping that uh, positive energy from that throw. Because that, uh, you know, when you make a play like that in the field, it gives you your adrenaline comes up, and then you get up at the bat, you got that little bit extra oomph when you swing. Uh, he made a beautiful throw there to uh, get McBath at home and preserve the lead for. Stevenson, that would have tied it up. It would have. That was a really close pitch right there. Hobson throws a fastball in the out, just off the outside corner. So Hobson beginning his third inning of work. He really settled down in the second inning. See if he can carry it into the third. He's got a full count here on Caracato. He's been going fastball with his uh, full counts. Let's see if he does that or if he changes it up on him. There's a fly ball out into right field. And Day with a nice running catch. And out in right field. He, I'm I don't sorry, know, McMath with McMath a nice McMath's running catch. Out there, but like out in right field and the ball's in the air like that at this time of day, he's there looking right into the sun. He, I don't know. You can see the shadows. Is pointing, the shadows are all pointing directly toward right field right now. So the, the sun, you know, it's hard to battle there. That's a tough field. Ground ball to Goodling. He gobbles it up for the easy out. And Hobson's really look, looked good the last couple of innings. Like he, uh, first inning, he didn't he didn't have this command. He found his fastball and. His, playing everything off his fastball, which isn't what he usually does, but he, he was able to make the adjustment and has been successful with it. That brings up Sancombe. Little nubber, foul ball. Foul ball, but Luis Rodriguez was right on it. Boy, he jumped out of there. He was able to avoid the bat, too. <laughs> if it was me, I would have slipped and fell on the bat. <laughs> or hit the runner with the ball, <laughs> one of the two. Probably, probably both. <laughs> Yeah, that was beautifully done. There's another fly ball to the right. Should be an easy one for McMath, and it is. So a one, two, three inning there for Christian Hobson. He is really, seems to be settling in. And we're gonna take a quick break here at the uh, end of two and a half uh, innings. Raptors trail by just one. We'll be right back with the bottom of the third after this. Get your college degree for a lot less. Montgomery College. And welcome back to the Germantown campus of Montgomery College. Michael Brown alongside Joe Thompson. Getting ready to start the top, uh, or I'm sorry, the bottom of the third inning. And uh, looks like another new pitcher out there, Joe. It's Seth Hartman. Seth Hartman. <laughs> Seth Hartman comes into the game. He's only had four appearances, two and two-thirds innings on the season so far. So not a huge amount of work. But a uh, tall, lanky right-hander. Right Let's see if uh, he can do a little bit better than what Brid was able to do last inning. Yeah, Brid had a rough inning. And Hartman is a... Uh, 
Big, tall, lanky kid, junior. Looks like he has a pretty live fastball. And Hartman is uh, out of Hagerstown, so a local kid. Went to Hagerstown High, uh, actually went to Hagerstown Community College. Hey. Community College guy moving up to the four-year ranks. So he is probably almost certainly seen played against the Raptors in the past as the Raptors play Hagerstown basically every season. All right, that brings up uh, Marley. Yeah. DH has walked. Scored a run today. Yep. Was on and scored in the first. I'm sorry, in the second. There's a fly ball. Deep right field. Right fielder back. And he's got it. And again, Joe Puzo's out there like trying to track that ball but also fighting the sun the whole way. I mean, and again, he didn't have the, the third of the, of the Windy Hill Cerberus of the wind blowing to, to no. affect that ball. So right. it's a little bit, little bit easier, but it's really hard out there in right field. So that brings up Day. He uh, had a single and scored a run on a wild pitch. And he grounds it right up the middle and it finds its way into center field. Another single right up the middle. That's his and second Hart hit of the game. Hartman's upset that he wasn't able to uh, reach out and snag that it goes by. You see it right here, low fastball. Hartman thought he was able to get a get the hand out there, but not quick, not quick enough. That brings up uh, Durant. Durant struck out his first time. And he lines it into the gap in right center, but oh, Apuzo with a nice catch. Saved extra bases there. That was a seriously hard play that he was able to do there. That ball was smoked out there to, to uh, right center field. He almost overran it, was able to correct course just at the last second to corral that ball. May have but saved a run there. Certainly saved uh, runners on yeah. second and third. But but Durant like absolutely smoked that ball. It was a great play out in right field. So Day still on first. It's a quick move by Hartman right there. Like he he's able to uh, snap that ball over to first base pretty quickly. That brings up Daniel Fernandez. He walked and scored last inning. There's a uh, throw down to second. Never saw a signal, but, but he's staying there, no, so no, I guess he's yeah, safe. No, 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 nobody's, <laughs> nobody's leaving the field, so I guess he's safe. <laughs> I never saw a signal. I guess he just said safe. Oh, okay. The ball got away. Oh, from, all right. The ball got away from the second baseman. We couldn't see that from yes. our vantage point. So Day with a stolen base. So now Fernandez with an RBI opportunity here with two outs, bottom of the third. Takes it on the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, bottom of the Raptors lineup has been doing well this game. Been very productive. They got things going uh, in the second inning. Yeah, they were able to bat around based upon the bottom of the lineup getting things going and the, bringing the heart of the lineup up to bringing the runs. There's a single into left field. Here comes Day motoring around third. He's got to run because we know Caracato has an arm, but Day beats it to score the tying run. And some smart base running by Fernandez there. When he saw the, the throw was going home, he takes the opportunity to uh, take second base. Absolutely. Gets himself in the scoring position. So the Raptors uh, 
Still have something going here with two outs, man on second, and that brings up Williams. He's been on base both times up. He singled in the first, walked in the second, and his walk forced in a run, and then he scored later. So he's had a productive day. Continuing his, uh, his stellar season with his on-base percentage. There's a hard hit ground ball to short, gobbles it up, throw to first in time for the out. And that ends the third inning, but the Raptors pick up a run to tie it up. So after three complete, we are tied at six. And we'll take a real quick break. We'll be right back with the fourth inning after this. We are back on the Germantown campus of Montgomery College, and uh, Hobson back out there on the mound to start the fourth inning. I mean, he was so efficient in the third. You know, why not just put him out there? I mean, just keep going with the with the uh, hot hand now. Keep it going at a very efficient third inning. One, two, three. A couple of fly balls and a ground out. Through less than 10 pitches. Now we got uh, Jack Gitterman coming up. He had a single and two RBIs his first time up. He's the DH. As we start the fourth inning, all tied at six. So Stevenson jumped out to a five run lead in the first inning. Picked up another in the top of the second. The Raptors answered with five in the bottom of the second and then tied it up in the bottom of the third. This Raptor team is showing lots of heart today. They're not giving up, not getting down on themselves after a, a hard first inning and battling to get themselves back into this game. I mean, that's a tough first inning when you fall behind by a, a crooked number like six and then uh, but you're right. There's just absolute. There's never any quit in a Dan Rasher team, as you and I well know. Not at all. He makes sure he gets those quality players. With uh, as we see, like a flyby by a B and a uh, high wide shot there. <laughs> <laughs> there are some large bees flying around here. We're told they're carpenter bees. Yeah, I see the hammers in their uh, tool belt. <laughs> and there is a strikeout. So, Hobson continuing to pitch well. Yes, and just proving uh, the coaches over there right that, that, no, coach, stick with me. I got this. And he, he's come come back and been really strong. That brings up Apuzo. We had... A fine catch in the uh, bottom of the third. He struck out the first time up. And he grounds it to third. Durant airmails it for over the top of the third base or the first baseman. And that's going to be an error on Durant. Yes, but for any uh, young players watching this game. A great thing about that was even with the overthrow of third, both the catcher and the right fielder were backing up that play to keep the runner from being able to advance on the error. It hits off the fence, you see the right fielder comes right in. Good play. Good fundamental baseball there. And Danny Fernandez on the job. There's a long fly ball to center. He's under it, and he's got it right up against the fence. Nice play by Nas. Kevin Nas able to track that down. I guess the advantage of a home field is that 
you know, unlike the center fielder for Stevenson, he's he's been here. He's he's played that play. And great shot by our handheld cameraman Tommy DeVita right there. And that brings up Baptiste. He's uh, walked, singled, and scored two runs. So he has been on every time up. Been a bit of a thorn in the side of the Raptors. There's a attempted steal, throw to second, and they got him. Yeah, Luis Rodriguez with the perfect throw then there. Boy, that is the pitcher's best friend there. Absolutely right there. So another, in effect, one, two, three inning, sort of, you know, taking a little detour, but to a one, two, three inning as right on a that was, beautiful throw. That, that was such a throw, su such a great throw and tag that Apuzo didn't even make it to second base. Right. Great play, great throw. So the error does not come back to haunt the Raptors, and uh, thanks to uh, Rodriguez's throw. Excellent. I mean, it's just uh, just an excellent bit of playing, and like as the Raptors get back into this game and they regulate from that, like just really not good <laughs> first inning. Right. They they're back. They leveled back. And now they're playing the way that they know they can play, and they'll, the way that you know they and their coaches expect them to play. And you know it, it shows that they're now creating runs, and they're now stopping the other team from from getting runs. And what I'm noticing here is I'm watching the team. There's a lot of camaraderie here, a lot of great team spirit. These guys are really rooting for each other. And you'd love to see that. Well, Michael, they learned it from watching you. Well, that's true. Exactly. There, there, there is nobody who's a better team player than you, Michael Brown. I'll accept that. Uh, <laughs> what else am I going to say? <laughs> no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Yeah, you're going to argue with your teammate, Michael? <laughs> All right, that brings up uh, number 23, Kevin Noss. A nice running catch in the top half of this inning. He's been on both times up. He walked in the first, he doubled in the second, knocked in a run with that double, and then eventually scored. He's trying to catch the Mustangs napping with a little drag bunt right there. Fouled it off, though. Meanwhile, Hartman is still out there for uh, Stevenson. Yeah. He, he was able to minimize the damage, only give up one run last inning, so they put him back out there. All right, outside. Little wind has picked up now. Here? At this, at this field? Yes. You sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Believe it or not. Right, windy. I don't windy call windy here for nothing. I mean, <laughs> it would be disappointing if there were no win. And it's blowing from right to left. Ooh, right square in the back. Yeah. Hit right between the two and the three right there. That that, that does not, not feel, feel good. good. No. Mm -mm. All right, and Rodriguez comes up with a runner on base, RBI opportunity right here. He hasn't done much of anything as of yet today, grounded to double play and struck out but he's got another opportunity here with a man on of course he had that uh, great throw there to end the uh, the top half of the fourth and Two. as you said earlier make a great play in the field you end up at the plate so let's see what he can do he's one of the uh, graduating sophomores we saw in the pregame ceremony Our ground ball to short, to second for one, to first, not in time. 
So he beats it out. Yep, he is able to uh, run hard straight out of the box to make sure that uh, they didn't get too off of that. So that brings up McBath. And he's been on both times up, hit by pitch, and then he got on in an error last time, but he was thrown out at home by uh, Caracato. He fouls it off. Well, let's see. Maybe not. It's hard for us to tell here. Fair, it's a fair ball. Fair ball. And it's uh, it, oh, Rodriguez holds it third. So McMath in with a double. I have to apologize, folks, but from our vantage point, the left field corner is, we just can't see it. And so we'll have to watch this replay to find out what exactly happened here. Well, if he takes the outside pitch where he's supposed to, hits it to the outside, and I guess this camera angle doesn't also can't see it, so, because it's, it's pretty much right next to me. And here comes a run on a wild pitch. Goodling took the ball. I'm pretty sure that Smoot and Hartman were mixed up right there. Smoot yeah. was expecting a, a, a breaking ball down low and ended up being a fastball over his head. Yeah, that, that, that definitely, definitely looked, looked like up. a communication breakdown there. Because the pitch was not that bad. There's a hard ground ball up the middle, and it'll go into center field for a run. McMath scores, and an RBI for Goodling. And <laughs> there's a lot of dancing in the, in the uh, Raptors dugout now. They're, they're playing more loose. They're having more fun right now, and it yeah. shows. And like, when, when you start having success, you know, success breeds more success. They're having fun over there. It's good to see. There's a long fly ball. And the outfielders Center didn't fielder, move. The bat flip. It's a home run. The fielders didn't even move. They didn't even move an inch. They were like, nope, they knew it. That was that was up in the pine trees out there in left center field. Nicholas Marley with a long home run. He knew it. And he scores. There we are. And look at the excitement on that uh, on that uh, Raptor side right there. Boy, nothing like, like a long home run to fire you up. And, and, and nothing like turning a 6-0 deficit to a 10-6 lead. In four short innings. That brings up Day. And uh, Hartman really run into trouble here. Just one out now. Bottom of the fourth, here's a look at it. Boy, oh, he just- in, Inside fastball, just tagged it. And that ball just kept soaring until they hit the pine trees out there in left center. And Bay grounds out to the shortstop for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up uh, number one, Maverick Durant. <laughs> Well, that was quite the shot. The fielders didn't even bother moving, Joe. No, not at all. That, that looked like a Michael Brown in his youth type hit. <laughs> I only wish. <laughs> I, 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 hear, I hear tell in Ohio that uh, you were quite the sandlot player. <laughs> I did have one walk-off hit in my life. <laughs> High and tight. Durant has struck out and uh, a fly out. He flew out to right field. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. He's ahead 3-0 right now. 
on through that one. Took a little bit off that one. Yeah, had, to, had the green light to, to hit right there, though. Well, they are swinging the bat well. Goes the runner, throw. And he's in there. And they're safe. Uh, oh, it's a walk. It's a walk anyway. So right. That didn't matter. He was, in, he was in there safely anyway. That brings up Fernandez. He's walked and singled and scored a run. Raptors still with two on. Still time to do damage. Only one out. Yeah. That was a good, good breaking ball right there by Hartman. Fernandez able to lay off of it. So it broke out of the zone. There's a ball out in two, but Abuzi, Abuzi had him play just right. Puzo, I'm sorry. Yeah, and it played just right. Yep. Low outside breaking ball, good piece of hitting. Try to get it to the opposite field, but hung up in the air too long. Puzo was able to get under it pretty easily. That brings up Waden Williams. This is his fourth time up. He singled, walked as an RBI and a run scored. Grounded out to short his last time up. It's the ninth batter of the inning for the Raptors. They're batting around. Second time this game they've batted around. Fouls it off. Two balls, one strike. Yep, again. Another high fastball that, uh, again, so hard to lay off. And oh, they love right, them. You can, you can see it better than any other pitch. You can't get your bat around to it. Takes it inside, three and one. I'm sorry, two and one. Two outs in the inning. It almost looked like he was trying to uh, get hit by that pitch. Raptors with four to take the lead, and he walks him. So that'll load him up for uh, Kevin Nas, who was hit by a pitch. He let off the inning. He started the whole thing off with a hit by pitch. So the sacks are full. The Raptors are not done yet. Ooh, nice save there by Smoot. That yeah. saved a run. Say it definitely saved a run. Cameron Day can move a little bit. Outside. Ooh. Got ahead of myself there. That yeah, one hit the corner. There's a fly ball and into left center, right center rather. Center fielder gathers it in for the third out of the inning. But the Raptors put four on the board to take the lead 10-6. So after four complete innings of play, the Raptors are on top 10-6. And we'll take a quick break and be right back with the fifth inning. MC is putting me on a path to succeed. 
And we are back. Getting ready to start the top half of the fifth inning. And uh, Hart, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Hops and Christian Hobson still on the mound for the uh, for the Raptors. And, uh, you know, it's a doubleheader, and you have a guy who, although he started roughly, has calmed himself down. And looking at his first warm-up pitch right there, beautiful curveball. So maybe he's finally got command of that now and you know that he's, he's been so effective since the first inning that the Raptors are just going to go with him as long as he can go yeah he is really uh, he's faced only one over the minimum uh, in the last three innings so uh, he's on a nice little roll here and uh, of course he was helped out uh, Last inning on that nice uh, caught stealing there by uh, Rodriguez. So uh, Baptiste leading off, and he hits the first pitch out into short left center, and it's gathered in by Aiden Williams for the first out. So one pitch, one out. And that's why they keep putting him out there. Like if he's able to get one pitch outs, keep, keep him going, keep him rolling. That brings up Smoot. Smoot has a a single and an RBI, and he scored a run. Also got on uh, by an error. But he got caught stealing, too. Yes, he did. I think he, that was a, the pickoff play. The uh, Hobson stepped off as he was stealing and was able to get him a run down. One out in the fifth, the Raptors on top, 10-6. There's a pop-up. Looks like uh, Hobson wants it, and he's got it. It was good communication right there. The, usually when the, uh, there's a high pop-up in the middle of the infield, one of the uh, other fielders gets it, but I don't think that one was high enough for the other fielders to get there. So Hobson just takes command, communicates to the other fielders, says, nope, I got this one. He, call, he calls off Rodriguez and just makes the catch. And he called off uh, Duran as well. And he really had the easiest play of all of them. And you're right, the ball was not all that high in the air. That brings up Kunkel. And... Um, He's on through an error, scored a run, and has a, RB on a RBI on a sacrifice. He hit the ball hard out to right center field. Center fielder is back there, gathers it in for the third out. So another one, two, three inning for Christian Hobson. Really nice play by Noss right there, ranging back to his left. Because that ball was pretty much hit on the screws. Boy, he... Uh, Kunkel extended his arms, really got a hold of that one. Nas ranges back, slows down just enough, knows the distance. Again, home field advantage, knows where the fence is. Is able to, to uh, slow down, run run under it, get himself under control, make the nice squeeze on the ball right there. Yeah, he covered a lot of ground there. <laughs> covered a lot of ground. We're going to take a real quick break. We'll be right back with more baseball after this. Half of the fifth inning, Raptors on top 10 6. Hartman still on the mound for 
Stevenson, and leading off for the Raptors is Rodriguez, the catcher. He's 0 for 3 on the day, so he is due. He definitely is, because he came into this game like just smoking the ball all season, you know, with a 480 slugging percentage. Like, when he hits it, it goes. Yeah. Third, uh, right up there in the uh, leaders in RBIs and homers. But he had an ex he's had an excellent uh, day behind the plate. And you got to figure he's got something to do with the way Hobson has settled in. There's a drive out into left center, or right center, rather. It's going to hit the wall. And he will coast into second. Oh, he's going to try. Oh, no. thought about it. No. Ball got loose there for a second. No, it missed, the hit, missed the cutoff on the uh, relay back into the infield. Here's a it's look. a breaking ball. He waited on it. And again, as I said a couple minutes before you hit that, you know, he's had a hard day today, but when he hits it, it goes. You know, he's, he's a big, strong kid. And, uh, you know, even waiting on that on that breaking ball, that which, you know, throws off your timing of, and, and your weight distribution, he's still strong enough to, to muscle it out there to the gap and roll it to the fence in right center. And he runs well for a catcher. That brings up uh, McMath, who's been on base all three times. He's hit by a pitch, got on by an error, and last time up he doubled and scored. He's had a good day. So the Raptors with the leadoff runner in scoring position. Bottom of the fifth inning. There's a drive out to right field, and it's gone. Home run for McMath. Line shot. McMath is one of the team leaders in home runs. That's his fifth on the season right there. And he really got a hold of that one. That, was, that wasn't a towering drive. It was a line shot that got out of here quickly. It really did. Uh, Apuzo and Wright maybe took a couple of steps. So that increases the Raptors lead now to 12-6. And that brings up Cam, Cam Goodling. Um, he is one for three. Last inning, he uh, had a single and an RBI and also scored a run. Struck out in the first, flew out in the second. And this is the type of the game the Raptors really needed. They, they've been struggling uh, of late, and they just really needed to have a game like this where they could just get their mojo back. And that is what's happening, or appears to be happening anyway at this point. The ball in the dirt. And I'll tell you, a couple of long balls will really put a jolt in a team. For sure. There's a shot out into center field. Deep but playable. And the center fielder gathers it in. Good thing to try to get a good swing on that. I think it kind of jammed him a little bit. He's, mm -hmm. he's still a big, strong guy. I was able to hit it that far out into uh, center field, but uh, you know, didn't get the barrel on it. That brings up uh, Marley. The DH, he homered his last time up. Of course, the bench thinks they threw at him. Replay, Ooh. didn't look like the ball hit, hit him at all. And the umpires are conferring. I don't know to find out whether or not they think it's intentional. Well, Marley, uh, uh -oh. They're warning. Uh, they they, they the warned bench. the pitcher and both both uh, benches. Yeah. So another one could lead to an ejection. And I, I don't know what the uh, the impetus behind all the warnings. Maybe there's some some talk going out in the field that we we're not privy to. We can't hear. It could be. But uh, it could be. That, that, that looked more like a, a fastball that got away than an intentional. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't look him. intentional. But. To but me. 
again, we don't hear what's going on in the no. field to, to know what's being said out there. And the umpire certainly can't. Yes. Um, back to Marley's walk twice. Has a home run. He's scored three runs. He's had a very productive day. Again, this is what the Raptors needed. They haven't had a day like this in a while. His home run last time up was a long shot to left center field. There's a breaking ball, didn't catch the corner. Foul out of play. That's a good pitch right there by Hartman. Try to keep it out of his wheelhouse. He's already hit the home run today, so like, don't let him get it. Get his arms extended on balance. He kept him off balance with that pitch. Outside in the dirt. And that one he tried to get him to chase the curve ball out of the zone. Good patience. Yes. Marley was able to hold off on that. He tried to wait for a better pitch to hit. And way outside for a walk. So Marley on base again. Been on base three out of his four times up. And that brings up Day. Yeah, Day's had himself a good day too. He's been on every, uh, well, two out of the three two times. Three times. Single and a run in the second. Single, a stolen base and a run in the third. And he grounded out his last time up. He's played a very solid right field. Yeah. Again, you know, fighting that sun, too. In the dirt. So Hartman now struggling with the strike zone a bit. I think it may have been intentional, trying to get him to chase something. You know, try, trying, to, uh, trying to sell the fastball, and then the bottom drops out of it. But, like, Cameron Day is a, a good hitter. He... he Recognized the pitch and was able to lay off of it. One ball, one strike. Bottom of the fifth inning. Swung through that one. And that's the type of thing that happens when you when you go breaking ball, breaking ball, and you sneak a fastball by somebody. Rappers. And, and, and it hit him with the curve for the K. For the strikeout. So that's the first out of the inning, and that brings up uh, Maverick Duran, who has struck out, flied out, and walked. That's two outs. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Ball got past the catcher, and Marley's Mark. able to move him away over into scoring position. So a base hit could add another run here. That's a strike. Good fastball on the corner there. There's a pop up. And it could be in no man's land. Up. A Puzo. Puzo. Did he hold it? No, he, no dropped he dropped it. it. He dropped it. And a run scores. As Marley never stopped, and he scored. Let's take a look at that. Are we going to give him an error, or is it going to be a base hit? Yeah, that was a high pop, a hard play. He's charging it. Boy, that's a it's tough one. In his glove. He tries to roll to cover it up. Man, and a roll. Oh, on the second somersault, it rolled out of his glove. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, that, that's a hard one to call. Uh, it's hit or error, but I think it's in his glove. He, yeah, you, you probably got to call say, that an error. Got to say that if it's if it's in his glove for that long, yeah, got to call it an error. Yeah, I it's would unfortunate because it was a great effort. He he's he's made some nice plays out there in right field. I almost hate to hang that on him. But. Exactly, and 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 that one you know had he been able to hold on would have been spectacular. So uh, Marley scores, that makes it 13-6 uh, Raptors. And there's another strike on Fernandez. Fernandez has 
Walked and scored, singled, and flew out his last time up. There's a hard single into right field. I'm sorry, left field. And uh, Durant moves into second base, so the Raptors stay alive. Good. Fernandez has had a good game today, too. He's been on base. Been on base uh, uh, three out the, of the four times. Hit the ball, come around to score once. The heats. Yeah, that's going to be a he's pitching been strong. change. And again, waiting, waiting on the inside breaking ball, able to keep his weight back and then turn on it. And because it's inside, he's pulling it down, you know, the, the left side of the, the field. And uh, again, like just smart, smart hitting. Like where, where's the ball pitched? and what speed and you adjust yourself to be able to hit it as they say to where they ain't. That brings in a new pitcher for Stevenson. We're trying to get a look at his number. And, uh, I can't see, is it 16? Like 15. Connor Fox. Connor Fox. Another one. Another freshman. Another freshman hasn't had a lot of uh, experience, which, you know, as the JV squad for a four year team, you would expect. And, and he's 0 and 1 on the season with in uh, nine and third innings pitched. He's out of Laurel, New York. Another New Yorker. Another New Yorker. Some kind of New York to Owings Mills pipeline going on here. <laughs> so the Raptors with three more of this inning. 13-6. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth and a pitching change for Stevenson. And uh, their manager, Dan Rescher, this is exactly what, what he needed. Again, for, for the morale of the team, you know, when you are struggling the way that they are, or they have been in the whole month of April, you need just one explosion. You need, you need one chance to get out all your frustrations. And this that's what this game has been for this team, just a chance to all the missed opportunities they've had, like you said, like all the games lost on the last play, the games lost in the last inning, or one play in a game turns the whole tide of the game. This, this is the game where they get out their frustrations after all that. Yeah, they've lost, as we said earlier, they've lost four games in the last play. They've also had a number of one-run losses. There's a nice bunt. Ooh, That's going to be tough. That's a beautiful bunt. And he beats it out, no question. That was a gorgeous bunt. A beautiful bunt single about 10 feet in front of the plate. And that Trent Smoot tries to get out there, but because Williams is so dang fast, yeah. he had to rush to try to get it. and Couldn't pick it up cleanly. Like just deaden that ball. He has to try to round it, but when he tries to pick it up, he, he doesn't get quite the grip on it, and that's a bunt single for Williams, who's also been on base a lot <laughs> this game. Yeah, that's his. Uh, he's been on base uh, four times today, and that brings up Nas, who's been on base all t all three times: a walk, a double, and a hit by pitch. He lines it right up the middle, and it's and through it for through. a single. Here comes Durant to score. And he's saving home. Knocked the ball out of the plate, off out of the glove. Fernandez with the aggressive run. And on the throw, and the throw to the plate, the uh, other runners, William, Williams and Nas, move up a base. So now they have two more in, in the scoring position for their uh, their big power hitter. And we need to discuss something here as the score has now crept up to 15-6 Raptors. If, in fact, they should end this inning with a 10-run lead, that would be the end of the ballgame. It would indeed. 
by rule. It's, it, because it's a double header, the games are seven innings regardless. But if the Raptors should be ahead by 10 after five, that would be the ball game. So a base hit here and that would and end the game. game. would be over. And there is a fly ball to left field, but he's under it. No, oh, no, at, no sorry. Not, not under it. No, nope. again, we couldn't out, out see Out of our it. view. <laughs> out of our view. It's actually foul ball. So, and uh, what a guy to have up here, Rodriguez. He doubled earlier in the inning. That's a good breaking ball right there. Got him tied up. He wanted to swing, thinking fastball, and he saw it breaking. He pulled it out. Rodriguez pulled out. Good pitch by Hartman. Yeah, heading the count now. Oh, he hit Ooh. him. Right between the numbers. So... That brings up McMath, who homered earlier in the inning. Ouch. Right there on the left arm, but I think he has a, a little arm protection right there, so no, no harm physically to him. And that brings up McMath. He had a line shot home run over the right field fence his last time up. Two run shot. That is and a half. Yeah. Raptors with two home runs wouldn't, on the day. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't it be fun if he ends this one with a grand slam to walk oh us goodness. off? Oh, my goodness. That would be something. No, of course, I you know, I just jinxed him. He's going to, like, hit a drubber to first base. <laughs> and that's outside. Evens the count at one and one. Raptors with the sacks loaded. Again, should the Raptors score here, that would end this game. The 10 run rule, way outside. Two balls, one strike. I guess a walk would do it too. Uh, absolutely, a walk off walk. And he popped it up. Can of corn to shortstop. And he's under. Ooh, oh, no! He didn't get it! He didn't get it. And the run scores. And, and that, that would be is game the ball over. game. <laughs> that, you know, of all the speculation as to how the game could have ended, <laughs> uh, that one wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't that in wasn't, the playbook. That wasn't what I. <laughs> That was not in the playbook as no. uh, McMath with a, is that a single or is that an error? Uh, I don't even know what you call that because he never, he touched, never it. touched it, but you would think that you know, a high pop fly in the infield would, would be the end of the a, game. A, a, yeah, a or catchable, the end of the inning. A catchable ball. Jake Baptiste, I mean, may, you, you, you said the wind started blowing and maybe the wind blew it out off course. I, it may have. It may have, so the Raptors take the uh, opener of the double header, 17 to six, and uh, a heck of a comeback for MC. Heck of a comeback. Yeah, it was wonderful. I mean, and, and you know, if we're if we're going to talk about a, a play of the game or player of the game, I would think that uh, Christian Hobson would be the the guy. Absolutely. After that tough first inning that he had, Ab where he gave up six. Uh, and you know was was able. I'm sorry. Was, he gave up five. Gave up another run in the in the second inning. But the way he was able to calm down, gather himself, and really fight, changed the way he his approach to pitching. Instead of going playing everything off the curveball, he played everything off his fastball. That was what was working. And so, I, t to me, his way of calming down and and stopping the bleeding and allowing his team to catch up. I think that makes him the player of the game for me. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%, Joe. Uh, Christian Hobson, the, the player of the game. The last four innings of work, he faced one man over the minimum. That's excellent. So, uh, now don't go anywhere. Stick with us. We're coming back for the second game, and if it's anything like this first one, it's going to be a lot of fun, folks. 
So once again, let's take a, a look at some highlights as we say goodbye. We'll see you in just a few minutes for game two of MC versus Stevenson. <laughs>